I've suggested for a long time that Lineside Studio needs a rewire and especially some heating introduced into this building. And eFix currently has four electricians within our team. However, we're not going to rewire it, are we? We're going to pass it over to Pegasus Electrical, where Eddie and Steve are going to rewire the unit for us. They're going to introduce things that we've already seen on the channel before. We're going to have the salamander trunking from the Grand. We're also going to have the Acti-9 isobar board from Schneider introduced into this building. And we're going to follow Eddie round as he starts the work within here pick his brains and see if we can find some top tips. We always love a top tip at eFix and what we've got here is you've got three meters lengths of trunking and conduit and you've got a three meter floor okay but what happens Eddie when you've cut that length and obviously it goes under the floor you're never going to retrieve it are you? Well, you can if you go uphill. Oh right okay only uphill. With the doors are open. Top tip from eFix always go uphill. <laughs> so how did you overcome the problem? Overcome the problem created a, a three meter draw. Ah right so you use a piece of trunking. What's there stopping go. them going out the other end? Uh, end cap on the uh, other end, and that's it. So all your offcuts go in here, pull the it off out. Offcuts go in here. Yeah. Um, offcuts are rod, offcuts are tubes, leads. Top tip. Like. I like a top tip. We've got another top tip down here as well. Yes, we, we have, yes. So what we've got here is plastic uh, mini trunking and conduit. What's the top tip here? Top tip, keep it in the bag that it arrives in. Uh, if you buy the bundle, keep the three metre bags, and that way then they stay nice and clean. Okay, yeah. It's like getting all dirty. That's probably done about 20,000 miles. <laughs> and it's yeah, still clean. as clean as it would come. And obviously you can put the offcuts in here as well because they yeah. stay within the back. Yeah. Still within the back. Top tip. So you brought me up here, Eddie, to have a look at the Milwaukee laser level. Uh, let's go back in, in time. What was the equivalent of this, say, early in your career? Well, it was either the Gary Neville. Which is what? It's uh, box level with the bubble. So spirit level, Gary Neville. Yeah. Love it. I've yeah. never heard that one before. And? And then you've got the uh, water levels, which was uh, a tube with uh, water in it with uh, markings at either end. And you'd keep one in a fixed position of what you wanted your datum line to be. And when you brought the other one up to where you thought it was going to be, again, when that line leveled out, That's you'd it, get the yeah, right position. That's it, zeroed out. That was it, you was there. Okay, but this time we've got this uh, lovely looking Milwaukee one. Just remind me how it's attached to the wall, can you? It's um, on an earth magnet, so you fix it to any steel work. And there's also it comes with a clamp that you can fix for um, like ceiling grid and such like as well. Okay, and it gives you three lines, am I right? Horizontal, vertical, and does it give you one over the top? Yes, it's uh, got three planes on it. Horizontal and vertical. And just remind me what we're using it here for then. So I can see we've got the horizontal line comes round. What, what are you using it for? Uh, we're using that to set up the uh, hanging struts and the uh, trunking. So it hits the bottom line of the trunk in all the way around the room and you're going to use that as your datum line throughout? That's right, yeah. I take it it's battery powered, how long the battery last? This one's on the 6 amp battery and that will last for, I believe, about 18 hours. Can you explain the fine adjustment it's got as well, Eddie? Yeah, we've got a knob just here and when we turn it, obviously I don't want to do it at the moment because we've got our levels already set. Um, you turn that and it's going to adjust the line slightly up and down to suit. So it saves so, you taking it off the wall and yeah, moving it up yeah. a fraction. With the magnet being so strong, it obviously makes it difficult to uh, get it to the millimetre. Okay, Eddie, you're going to cut a piece of Legrand trunking for me. Any top tips? Yeah, PPE first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I use a block of wood to clamp the front to help to uh, clamp it correctly and then just cut nice and steady. Right, okay, and then you're going to show us another tip about once you've cut it and preparing the end, yeah? Yes, will do, yeah. Clean cut. Okay, but of course we're obviously going to have to spray that up in order that it doesn't rust. Yeah, well, I need a slight file. Yeah. Which I won't do for demonstration purposes. But um, you got a top tip for spraying it up, yeah? I have indeed. Yeah. You've told me I've done it wrong, so that's good. I like yeah. that. I won't say you've done it wrong, but I didn't do it right. Yeah. You're just too slow. Top top tip then. Uh, when spraying the end of the trunkings, aim at an angle from the inside. So you don't have to tape up then, so I See, taped it up, didn't I? Don't, so no tape, not required. Mm. 
Okay. As you see then, no spray on the outside. Oh, that's a bit of a bother, no masking but... required. Okay. Top tip. Top tip. Eddie, we've just pushed it in here to a 90 degree and you said there's a little top tip for me here. Yeah, if you loosen off the uh, nuts, uh, that, they'll clip straight in. Thus, then it, you've got a pivot point uh, so you can uh, fix the trunk in at the other end. Uh, thus, uh, you can do it as a one-man job. So me and Gordon have looked at Legrand's IP4X and IP55 trunking on the channel. However, it takes a real professional, someone installing it day in and day out in order that we can get a true and honest reflection of the trunking. However, Steve is currently busy, so I've had to draft mm. you in, Eddie, for your opinion. So have you before fitted this Legrand trunking? Yes. You have? Me. Yes. So since when? Since 2011. Wow, that is a long time you've been installing it. Now, there must be reasons behind choosing that as your trunking. So what would you say would be its best feature? Uh, the quality and the speed of fitting. Speed of fitting, so therefore it's easier to install, therefore we can work quicker and we can get to the next job, yeah. etc. In that time, so 2011 is going back a while, have you fitted anyone else's trunking in that time? Yes, I've fitted other mates, but I've just come straight back to Legrand. Right, okay, so it's your trunk in a choice, would you suggest? Oh, without question, yeah. And we've seen it being installed. We're going to continue on to getting some great tips off Eddie as we go and put the lid on, etc. And we've also got the distribution board to mount. So shall we get on with doing some of that or shall we let Steve do it all? We'll leave Steve to do it. We'll leave Steve to do it all. <laughs> so what's the top tip this time then, Eddie? Uh, we're fitting turnbuckles to the uh, trunking lid. Okay, so we've got in front of us here 50 mil and 100 mil lid there, and it looks like pattern pending invention from Pegasus Electrical, is that correct? Yes, something like that, yes. Okay, so you're going to show us how you're going to mark up for these turnbuckle clips then? Yes. First of all, we mark up 150 from the end of the trunk in. Okay. Straight line through. So square that one up, and then you're going to be using this bit of kit here, yeah? That's correct, yeah. And simple as. This is actually a viewing hole, this one is. Ah, right, so, ah, I like that, yeah, so you can see that you've, uh, let's just have a little look, yeah, you've squared that one in there. Yeah. And which of the two are you gonna use? I'm gonna be using these two here. Okay. Two marking points. Ah, right, okay, and then yeah. is it 14.1 mil that we need? Yes, it is, yeah. And then literally, we just, That's a 14 mil hole saw, and you say that gives a real nice uh, snug. Uh, nice snug uh, fit, yes, yeah, it does. Okay. So let's see, uh, are you going to pop a couple in for us? Yes, I will do, yeah. Get me tap on me tap. And I tend to uh, face the, uh, the spring retainer to the outside. Yeah. So it's ready to go, go. Pop them in there. Put oh, it right. down. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice fit, isn't it? And if they don't uh, go straight away, just quick tap. Okay. You're going to repeat the process for us on the 100 mil lid? Yes, it works slightly differently. All right, okay. I'll look at a second top tip then. Yeah. Same again, 150 from the end. Is it the same viewing hole again? In your your lid itself, that viewing hole does it work for both? Uh, no, uh, it, this one works slightly different. This oh, one right, does. Okay. Yeah, it's this view hole this time. Oh right, okay. So second yeah. viewing hole. Yeah. See that gives us that one. Yeah. That would work for the three inch. Okay. Or the seventy five mil. That's better. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'll show you them how we do this one. All we do is flip that round. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. And that gives us two positions and uh, we drill yeah. again. And off we go again. Right, 
it's incredibly you simple, wasn't it? Uh, oh yeah. How long you had your plate? How long has this template been? Uh, uh, this one's about, about three years old. Um, the other one, one of my other ones, got nicked with a load of other stuff. <laughs> so, Somebody yeah. borrowed your van overnight, did they? Yeah, and didn't return it. And then same again. Let's just uh, pop them in. Like so. Okay, so I would suggest that plate there is a top tip from Eddie. So we're going to set this up to 50 mil, and you're going to show me a top tip in order to get a line across the bottom of this distribution board at 50 mil. Yes, that's correct, Gary. Um, little carpenter trick. Okay. There we go, six holes. So we've marked out six positions. What size are the bushes again? These are 38 mil short reach bushes. Okay, time to drill the holes in. That's nice and sturdy. Top tip. Put a cardboard in. Yep. And then you back out, you've only got to vac that part instead of the whole board. Oh right, yeah. In. They line up, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stroke a lot now, won't it? No. <laughs> that looks like a product I've seen before on the channel. What have we got there then? Oh, we've got the Brocket, 38 mil. Okay, is that a prototype or is that available? It is, it is. It's a prototype. Okay. Uh, Adrian's uh, sent them up to me, mate, um, to give them a try. Okay, let's, well, let's give them a try then. Yeah. They work. Well, that makes life easier, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Me and the Tim Efix would like to thank Pegasus Electrical and all those top tips he gave us as he installed the containment here at Lineside Studios. And what a pleasure it was to see the Legrand Salamander IP4X trunking being installed after me and Gordon had done a review on it. I'm standing here by the Acti9 Isobar distribution board from Schneider. And we've seen previously in videos, me and Gordon look at the plug on neutral and the power tag. And in future videos, you're gonna see how we're gonna develop the wiring system from this point in order to facilitate the circuits that we install at Lineside Studios. But as always, we're interested in your comments. Have you been fitting this trunk in by Legrand? Is it great? What's your feedback? Is there any top tips that Eddie didn't give us that you'd like to give us in the comments below? We'll try and get back to as many of those as we can.